This morning I had the opportunity to spend a few hours with a group of uh, well-known CEOs at the MCG. I was there from uh, 7 in the morning till about 11.30 and I spent four and a half hours just having real deep and insightful conversations around business. Now these people are accomplished CEOs who have built multi-million dollar companies. Uh, in many cases they've built multiple companies and sometimes even across different industries. And it's really interesting because when I have the opportunity to sit with people who are highly accomplished, I can't help but compare the conversations I used to have with the people that I grew up with in many cases uh, when I was younger. The type of people that I used to spend time with when I was an underachiever compared to the type of people I have the opportunity to spend time with today as I'm achieving more and more for my life. Now the interesting thing is that as I reflect back, I can now start to see how our thinking is the main reason we end up where we end up. Now this is something that most people don't see because most people cannot see their own blood blind spots. Most people can't really think about what they think about and they can't always make a connection about the way they think and how it results in the outcomes that they're producing in their life, whether it be in the area of health or peace of mind or in relationships or career. So one of the things I started to think about is when I was young and I used to spend time with people who were massively underachieving and they were struggling, that there was never any question that they raised which would imply that they really wanted to become successful. In fact, they were asking themselves questions but the types of questions that they were asking themselves were what I now consider to be questions that lack depth. And one of the things I have come to understand in life is that the quality of questions that we ask ourselves determines the quality of life that we end up living. As an example, when I was struggling and I was living with a bunch of guys, uh, none of us at the time had any money. We were all uh, people who used to struggle to hold down jobs. Uh, none of us actually took full responsibility. Majority of us were addicted to entertainment and having fun. And we just wanted to go out and get drunk and none of us were actually thinking about a long-term future. And I realized that I'm so fortunate because for some reason, through the interaction that I've had with mentors over the years, I was able to break through those patterns and create a vastly superior and vastly different life for myself today. And so many of those people who I used to spend time with back when I was very young, a lot of them are still stuck in that life and that's not uncommon. You will actually see that until people elevate their thinking, they don't really transform their lives and lifestyles even when they're surrounded by opportunities. Because if the thinking is restricted, then the life also becomes very restrictive. Now as an example, I remember back in the day when I used to hang out with people who were really not achieving much in life the quality of questions were on the lines of how can I get a job you know or what kind of job can I get or can I get a job uh, and I compare that to the types of questions that I hear now which is about how do we get massive market penetration or how do we make a significant impact in the marketplace or how do we create a superior customer service so the kind of questions are, are very different now you might be thinking well, I'm obviously not going to ask those types of questions unless I have a business, but this is where people go wrong. You see, the life doesn't come before the thinking. It's the type of thinking that results in the types of decisions which then ends up in that life. And I think a lot of people have this backwards. A lot of people say, well, you know, I will start being a leader once I get the promotion. But no, unless you start being the leader, you won't get the promotion. And this is the point of this video is to explain how we think in the reverse. Whereas what we need to understand is that all the time, our life circumstances and our results are mirroring what's going on up here. As an example, a second question that I hear a lot of people who are struggling ask themselves is, how can I get a little bit more money? Whereas people at the top end, they are thinking about financial abundance. Again, talking about lifestyle, a lot of people who are struggling with may ask themselves a, a question which may be on the lines of how can I make more money in a job rather than asking themselves how can I make a lot of money in a meaningful occupation that is going to give me time freedom, it's going to give me autonomy and it's going to give me the ability to make a difference. So the quality of questions on both sides are very different and because I have been on both sides, I have had the perfect opportunity to analyze those differences.
people on this side again are thinking only about the weekend. They're thinking about, you know, well, what am I going to do on the weekend? But people on the side of success who are also living significant lives, they're not just thinking about the weekend. They're not even thinking about what they're going to do in a year from now. They're thinking 10, 15 years ahead. And in many cases, they're thinking multi-generational. They're thinking about what's going to happen to their children and grandchildren. Right? So there is also this concept, and this has been researched by the way, that people who tend to struggle in life tend to be more short-term thinkers. They succumb to instant gratification. Whereas people who are highly successful, they tend to be long-term thinkers. They are thinking 15 years ahead. In fact, one study done by a guy called uh, Dr. Banfield, which is uh, something that's available on Google, uh, actually talked about the fact that one of the biggest predictors of economic and social mobility is long-term orientation. And you'll find that in many cases, people who are struggling, but continue to struggle perpetually, are short-term thinkers. They're not really thinking long-term. The other difference I have found is that people who are struggling, they tend to act like a victim. They actually genuinely believe that they're victim of circumstances. Whereas people who are living lives of success and significance, they tend to believe that they have the biggest influence on the results. The, yes, that there are circumstances. Yes, they may, be, they may even believe in the concept of destiny or fate. But largely they believe that 80% of what happens in their life or 90% of what happens in their life, they can influence. So there's a fundamental difference in attitude. There's a fundamental difference in perspectives. There's a fundamental difference in mindset. And that difference makes all the difference because how we think determines how we approach life, how we see problems and how we see challenges. Do we see challenges and problems as something that must be avoided because it's negative? Or do we see problems and challenges as something that is necessary, essential for growth and success? These are the types of differences in thinking that to me is very very clear results in us creating our own destinies without even realizing because we do it unconsciously we do it blindly so the question is how do you think are you the type of person who believes that circumstances are greater than you or do you believe that you are greater than the circumstances do you believe that problems are something that must be avoided or do you see that problems are necessary for growth do you see that failure is something that is negative or do you see failure as the other side of success? Do you see that it is more important to have fun right now and not think about the future? Or do you think that it's more important for you to be serious right now so you can have fun in the future? How do you really think? This is a great opportunity for you to start to assess your mental and thinking patterns and try and identify the link between how you think and the results you're creating in your life. Do you really have high standards when it comes to your life? Do you really value discipline or do you value having fun right now and succumbing to instant gratification? You will start to see that if you really get serious, you'll start to identify clear patterns between the way you're thinking and the decisions you're making, the behaviors you're engaging in and the results it's producing.